guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. In today's video, I want to talk to you about five different types of perennial that are heat tolerant and that bloom through the majority of the season. I know that a lot of you guys are in areas where it's above 100 degrees right now. We are too. And I've seen a lot of questions come through about what can I plant in my garden that's not going to shrivel up and die once the heat of summer sets in. The first one is Russian sage. And I absolutely love this perennial because of how low maintenance it is. In fact, you oftentimes see it a lot in commercial landscapes because it provides so much color without hard any work. They can take the heat, they can take the drought, they attract pollinators like crazy, and they bloom about midsummer all the way through frost. And they start blooming right about the time when our first flush of summer perennials are already done. So our daisies, our um, dianthus, all those kinds of things have been cut back and we're waiting for them to reflush. And in the meantime, it's really nice to have something that will kind of pick up the slack. The other thing I love about it is that it comes back fresh from the ground every spring. So typically in late fall, I'll go in and kind of mow it down to the ground and then I get to enjoy fresh growth every year. My absolute favorite variety is called denim and lace. And the reason I like this one is because of its size. So traditional Russian sage will grow anywhere from like five to six feet tall and wide. So you need a pretty good area, like a pretty good space to put that plant. Denim and lace only grows about two to two and a half feet tall and wide. So it's really easy to tuck into the landscape. I actually planted, I think seven of them around an urn in one of our gardens and it's perfect. It grows to be the perfect size and it stays compact and it doesn't flop over. So that's one of the most common things I see about Russian sage. People say, you know, I, it grows up nice and then it just flops over right from the center. Typically, the reason why it does that is because it's either getting too much water or not enough light. Number two is lavender. And who does not love to grow lavender for its fragrance alone? That's why a lot of us plant it. It's also one of those super low maintenance perennials that'll bloom almost all the way through the entire summer. They are drought tolerant, heat tolerant, and they attract pollinators just like the Russian sage. The wonderful thing about lavender is that there's like a hundred different varieties of it. A couple of my favorites that I have the most experience with are Sweet Romance and Munstead. So I just recently planted a hedge of Sweet Romance in front of our vegetable garden fence. I chose that one because of its mature size. It only grows about 12 to 18 inches tall and wide. And I wanted kind of more of a petite perennial right there. So that fit the bill perfectly. The other one that I love is Munstead, and that one will grow usually like 18 to 24 inches tall and wide, and I just put in a new hedge of that this summer, and I'm really excited to see them grow. And the same rules that apply to Russian sage kind of apply to lavender as well, in that they like a ton of sun. In fact, all of these plants, the more sun they get, the happier they'll be. And lavender also does not like a ton of water. It can rot really easy if it's sitting in water. It really likes fast draining soil where the water can just run away quickly. Number three is echinacea. And I absolutely love this perennial for a couple reasons. One, it starts its big, beautiful show right when everything else is petered out. So it starts blooming beautifully and full uh, about midsummer and blooms all the way through frost. They also attract pollinators and they're generally really winter hardy. The other thing about them is that there are so many varieties available in all kinds of different colors and sizes that it's kind of impossible for you not to be able to find one to fit your particular garden situation. Some of my favorite varieties, and I tend to like more cool colors kind of on the pink tones. Of course, I like the classic Echinacea Magnus. It's a beautiful purple cone flower. I like white swan, uh, green envy, big sky, summer sky. If you like something with a little bit more punch, um, Lakota fire is a new one and it's really pretty. The fourth one is sedum and this one had to be on the list because of how tough they are. They actually don't start blooming midsummer, but they start setting their buds and their growth habit and their buds are so pretty that I think that they're just a gorgeous plant pretty much all season long. So they're also really drought tolerant, heat tolerant. They attract pollinators and they're winter hardy and they also come in a lot of different sizes and colors. I tend to like the upright sedum varieties a lot, like Autumn Joy is a classic favorite. I love the color of blooms. It's kind of that coral, kind of smoky pink. Um, Lemon Jade is one I planted a big drift of last year and I love it because it has yellow blooms. You don't often see that on an upright sedum. Um, there's another one called Pure Joy. Now you just have to take a look at this plant. It, they grow in this perfect round ball and I think it's just so cute. Um, and I also did plant one that's kind of a semi upright. It's kind of in between like a ground cover and an upright called Superstar. And I planted this one because it has deep purple foliage and then it blooms bright, bright pink. And the last category, number five, is Rudbeckia, also known as Black Eyed Susans. And I know that these are a favorite of so many of us gardeners out there. They're just such a classic flower. They kind of have a 
cottage garden feel to me, and I love just the bright pop of yellow that they bring to a flower bed. So the most popular variety is Goldsturm. Um, these are such a wonderful naturalizing perennial that start to bloom mid-season. You have these along with some like echinacea, maybe some sedum right in front of them. Just absolutely stunning. There are also a lot of varieties of annual or kind of on the lines of tender perennial rudbeckias that are absolutely beautiful. A lot of them don't survive in our zone five, but I use them anyway, like Cherry Brandy, Denver Sunset, Cherokee Sunset, Irish Eyes. Beautiful, beautiful group of plants. They also attract pollinators. I notice honeybees and butterflies on mine all the time. So that's pretty much it, you guys. That is five categories of plants that thrive in the summer heat. They will not shrivel up and die when it gets 100 plus degrees. That is when they start to shine. And I thought it would be maybe helpful for you guys who are going through that season right now where it's hard to even be outside ourselves. Um, and it's even harder to look at a landscape that doesn't have pretty color. Um, so these are five plants. And like I said, there are many different varieties within each category um, that can fit your specific garden space and situation. Um, but these are the ones you want to put in so that you can have some interest during this hot part of the summer. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.